Every day, you make decisions. What to wear, what to eat, where to sit at lunch. But some questions require more thought. Kyle is on the edge. To jump or not. They're jumping off a ledge 30 feet high. The water is shallow, and if you don't jump out far enough, you could hit the rocks below. I've jumped off stuff this high before. It just, this is just different. Then jump, come on, just get it over with. He can jump, he can climb back down, or he can stand there a while and think about it. Oh, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle isn't wearing any safety equipment. He could get hurt. He could hit the water the wrong way, or hit the river bottom too hard, or hit a rock on the way down. But if you back down, some will say you were afraid. On the other hand, when somebody jumps, the other kids cheer. And besides, a leap through the air might be exhilarating. It's really cool and it's like a it's like a high, but it well for me it is. Just to know that you're not being good. It's two feelings. You know it's wrong, but it's like the greatest feeling in the world because you have a bunch of people behind you. No. What's important to Kyle? Is he jumping because he wants to? Because it's fun? Or does he have another reason? Will Kyle jump? What factors might influence Kyle's decision? Every day of your lives, you make decisions. And every decision is influenced by a variety of factors. Lori faced a decision a lot of high school kids face. How far should you go to get ahead, to stay ahead, in the face of intense competition? So this is our team at one of the championships, and we're doing the pyramid here. Lori started competitive cheerleading as a sophomore in high school, and her team won third place at nationals that first year. She was small, so they made her the flyer, the one thrown up into the air. It's like your little five minutes of fame. She loved it. But then, a girl smaller and five years younger started trying out for Lori's spot. And she was, like, here on me, and she's probably about, like, at the most, 90 pounds. Lori decided to take diet pills to make sure she didn't lose her place on the team. I took two of these every morning, and then two again every afternoon. But those pills contained a stimulant, ephedra. I was dizzy, I felt sick to my stomach, thought I was gonna throw up all the time. I wasn't hungry, I couldn't eat, and if I tried to eat, I felt even more sick. I would go to cheer and I was tired and I was shaky. She wasn't thinking about anything but her immediate goal, to lose weight. She didn't think about other consequences. It's the mistake a lot of people make. Trey used to drive too fast. I guess I was just living the moment for what it was then and not for the future, not thinking about the future as most kids do. With cars and alcohol and drugs, some kids like to take risks. You don't feel like you can die or anything. It's just, you know, whatever you do, it's, you're not gonna be hurt by it. But why? Why would Lori or anyone else take a chance with their life or their health? Kids think themselves invincible. Nothing can happen to them. It may happen to others, but it's not going to happen to them. That may be partly due to age. The part of the brain responsible for judgment and impulse control, called the prefrontal cortex, is still developing during the teenage years. The brain matures um, all the way up into adolescence, and in some cases into young adulthood. So, it may not be until you're in your 20s that the brain is fully developed, and you're capable of carefully weighing risks. The comparison with respect to how they negotiate decision-making, uh, how they engage in behaviors, what their motivation level is, will be different for an adolescent that's transitioning to adulthood. To Lori, 
the risk of not making the team was greater than the risk to her health. But during her senior year, she dislocated an elbow during a stunt. That's when she decided to stop taking the pills. I just realized that it's not worth the health effects to like put your health at risk to lose weight for a sport. I'd rather be alive and not be really skinny than try and hurt myself. He doesn't want to show his face or use his real name because of his past. Selling drugs and stuff like that, anything to just bring in money for you know the whole crew. The crew Luis is talking about is a gang. He decided to join when he was 16. Why? They all showed me love and stuff like that. They're all like, you know, you're my boy, whatever you need, you know, I'm always, I always got your back, you know, this and that. One of the reasons kids are joining gangs, they want to be part of a group, they want respect, they want power. Um, but sometimes it's because they don't have any other option. Or they don't think they do. Luis was having trouble at home, fighting with his dad and getting a lot of pressure from his friends. So he joined the gang. Peer pressure can be hard to resist, and it's all around us. It's the voice that Kyle hears on the edge of the cliff. Come on, Kyle, you can do it, dude. Come just on. Yeah, all three of us jump right off of here, straight out. It's the voice of others encouraging us to take a risk. All young people are exposed to peer pressure, but the challenge in part of growing up is learning how to deal with it how to be true to oneself, and how to make good decisions. And I know deep down inside, I was going through a lot, so I guess I turned to that to get away from what I was going through. But at the same time, I was just making things worse. By worse, he means dangerous. It's a scary life. It is, I had a lot of enemies, and I didn't want to end up dead or in jail. I wanted to use the talent that I was given to do something positive. After nearly two years, Luis recognized where his life was headed, and he made a tough decision to walk out, to leave the gang. Now, months later, he still fears retribution, but he was willing to accept that risk to get out. A light just went off one day. I was, there was a lot going on, and I had a lot of my conscience, and it was starting to drive me crazy. And when a friend told Luis he was thinking about joining a gang, Luis said, consider the consequences. Because joining that gang is not going to get him anywhere. It's just going to end up ruining his life. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Ambra sings. She's also an honor roll student, a member of the track team, and president of the student body. I know what I'm doing. I know how I am. I know the real me. Amber doesn't drink, smoke, or do drugs. How does she make decisions? She says she tries hard to focus on what's best for her, even if others don't agree. I just feel like you're not strong-minded, basically, that you're easily influenced by others, and that's really not a good thing, because in that case, you won't, you won't make your own decisions in life. You know, you'll just go off of everybody else's, and your life will be basically a reflection of other people's ideas. When she struggles with a decision, she hears two voices, her own and her mom's. My mom, she was, but Amber, you, you be you. You never let anybody change it. Just driving in my head from the time I can understand all the way up until now. So it was my responsibility to teach her who she is, as opposed to hearing you're this and you're that. And she'd take that in and she start to believe it then she would live by that. Wherever she is, she can hear her mom. For everyone, having an adult role model can be different. It might be a parent or grandparent, member of the clergy or a coach. It's amazing to see what happens if a child knows that there's somebody counting on them to do their best. Then they'll give their best. I feel your presence near. Ambra says that ultimately her decisions are her own, and so is the responsibility that comes with them. There's only one me, you know, and it's like, I don't know, my mother always 
raised me, you know, to, to do what you want to do. No one else can influence you. If this is what Amber has set in her mind to do, do it and never let anybody else change it because you'll be living your life based off of other people's judgments and what they feel is right for you. At first glance, Jamie's choice to get behind the wheel of a car, drunk, seemed like a spur of the moment decision. In fact, it was one more step in a downward spiral of bad decisions that began only after she started college. In high school, I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs, I just didn't, you know, I was captain of the color guard, I did, I had my own little activities. But then she met a friend who liked to go to bars. She had an extra fake ID, so I was going into bars and stuff um, when I was 20. But it's a cycle and it keeps going and it keeps building and it keeps getting more. You start drinking and then everything becomes a great idea. Jamie was breaking the law because she was too young to drink legally. Also, her blood alcohol level was three times the legal limit for an adult when she got behind the wheel to drive home that night. Making the right decision seemed like the furthest thing from Jamie's mind. What's scary and what's sad is it wasn't really any different from a lot of other nights. Jamie never made it home. She crashed her car into a cab, killing the driver and injuring his passengers. Now she's in prison, convicted of vehicular homicide. I had everything worked out, you know, every little step of the path. And man, I just I flushed that right down the toilet. It's hard to think about the future, about what might happen. It's even more difficult when you've been drinking. Once you reach a certain point in your drinking. It's like being under general anesthesia. You do not, you are not aware. You, you do not remember anything that occurred. The conscious, rational part of your brain, it gets put to sleep. Every decision you make brings consequences. Some don't last. Some will change the rest of your life. Nobody else went and did what I did. Nobody hurt Mr. King but me. And um, so, uh, What's real hard to swallow is that I deserve this. All the bad things that have happened to me, I deserve them because of what I did. Did she mean to kill a man when she got behind the wheel drunk? No, but then no one ever does. So you don't think about, hey, let's go have some beers. Wait, maybe I'll kill someone. It just doesn't happen. They think that it will never happen to them because it's impossible. They're they're different. Someone else may get pregnant, someone else may get a sexually transmitted disease, someone else may get caught smoking, but it's not going to happen to them. That's what they think. But it happened to Jamie. I didn't think I'd ever be one of these people that, you know, that, that drinks and drives and, and, and hurts people, but I am. And now I'm one of the statistics of an inmate. And, um, and being an inmate is real hard. With so much going on in our lives, we're making decisions constantly, sometimes without even thinking about it. Sometimes, focusing on the end result can make a hard decision easier. We can also learn from a bad decision and make it right, like Lori. And Luis leaving his gang, resisting the pressure to go along with the crowd. And some, like Ambra, have chosen a strong role model to guide them. No matter what the decision, make it with a clear head, unclouded by drugs or alcohol. Jamie learned that lesson too late, after a man died, after her life was put on hold. Now she has a new perspective on what happened that night. It didn't happen to me, I let it happen to me. And that's what people gotta realize is that you, you decide yourself if you're gonna let it happen to you. Kyle is still on the ledge, but he's made up his mind. Jump! 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 Yeah! He's okay, but still he might wonder, was the applause worth the risk? Did he jump because he wanted to? Was he worried that his friends would say he was a chicken for not jumping? And what kinds of friends are those? Any decision you make may bring a question. At the end of the day, you have to be able to say, did I do the best that I possibly could? A lot of kids do know the difference between right and at least 
like totally wrong. So a lot of times I think kids are able to catch themselves before they completely fall off the cliff. What would you have done in Kyle's situation? Why?